Um, I'm Wen Zuhainis. I'm from the um, University of Putra, Malaysia. Sawadika. Tatia Xiao Hao. I'm also the chairman for the Malaysian E-Learning Council of the uh, 20 public universities in uh, Malaysia. Um, I'm in, in University Putra, Malaysia, I'm the deputy director of the Centre for Academic Development, looking into the curriculum development in uh, the universities. I'll be sharing with you today on uh, a little bit about Malaysia MOOCs, right? Uh, and also... Uh, some of the examples of my, my own MOOC with my students, uh, which is actually a uh, student-created MOOC. And also uh, a, a little background on how uh, we actually created MOOCs together in our department, um, just within uh, three months with uh, digital content of the MOOC. Okay. So one of the reasons why, you know, uh, we, from my title, Reimagine and Redesigning the 21st Century Learning, because I'm actually a uh, microbiologist, okay? Uh, I'm teaching microbiology. Um, for me, I think microbiology is something that you cannot see, microbes, bacteria, and it's more difficult for the students to imagine. So, and, and, we are talking about Gen Z students who actually, when they come into the class, they do not want to sit still and listen to you like this now, right? <laughs> yeah, they want to walk around, they want to voice out, they want to be able to, to speak. And the most important thing is they want to be able to collaborate. I think it's very important for students to be able to collaborate, to communicate and also to get connected. And in, uh, this is from the World Economic Forum, where in 2020, you see the top 10 skill, uh, top 10 skill of students are actually complex problem solving, critical thinking, and creativity. Creativity, and you see in 2015, creativity is at number 10. Right? Now, Gen Z, where are we, or where are you? I'm here. Some of you are here. <laughs> but it's okay. When you are here, we are actually Gen Z at heart. Right? And, and Gen Z characteristics, they think in 4D. They think in 4D. And they are all visual learners. Okay, they are all visual learners. And this is not the future. This is what they have now. Or some of you may even have this. Smartwatch and all these uh, um, AV glasses. I'm afraid if somebody would want to you know, create the uh, X-ray glasses. <laughs> right. So how do we actually redesign our learning? Now, I always want to, although we call ourselves a lecturer or an educator, it would be good to now call ourselves as learning designers. Okay, we we'll design our learning for our students, right? From, and and I, I am a strong advocate of empowering the learners. That means they, I want my students to learn by doing, right? So, one of, one of the um, approach okay, for the Gen Z would be challenge-based learning, task-based learning. Right? Remember just now, they want to collaborate, they want to connect. So they, not, they do not want to sit still and listen. And in designing the, the learning for the Gen Z, it, we would want to make it more personalized. Okay? And we are moving... We want the students to be what we call the self-determined learners. Right. So come to this in uh, Malaysia MOOCs. Okay. This is the OER, Open Education Policy in Malaysia. Um, this is the 
um, my uh, council, the Malaysian e-learning council for the 20 public universities. And we have the Malaysian education blueprint for higher education and also for school levels, K-12, and also the national e-learning policy. And these are the domains of the uh, national e-learning policy. Uh, the, we would look at the infra and infrastructure, the governance, the online pedagogy, the e-content, professional de development, and lastly, the inculturations. Um, we'll be focusing on the online pedagogy, different phase of how we would want to, uh, the, as a guideline for us to do uh, as a framework for our online uh, learning, especially uh, on OCW, e-content, and MOOC. So different phase of the national e-learning policy. Right, so in Malaysia MOOCs, 20 public universities will have to come to develop their own uh, MOOCs. And uh, the three categories, the common uh, courses will be the niche courses and also the lifelong learning courses. Every public university will have a common course that is, uh, uh, there are four courses that are shared together among the 20 uh, public universities. Uh, these are uh, the statistics of the enrollment. Uh, at this moment, uh, the public universities are using uh, open learning. We also use uh, future learn, for example. Um, so there are 20 public universities. Uh, right now we have about 584 MOOCs with the total enrollment of 472,000, over 472,000 uh, enrollments. Um, this is... Um, the social learning platform, as I mentioned, we use uh, Open Learning and also Future Learn. And there are all these, uh, the learning um, framework or the learning, uh, the, when we create actually the uh, uh, storyboard in the uh, platform. And there are also um, courses that is free to join and um, pay to certify. Okay, we also produce uh, guidelines. Huh? Guidelines for the Development and Delivery of Malaysian MOOC. This is by our uh, Malaysian Qualification Agencies. And we have also guidelines on cred uh, credit transfer uh, of MOOC. Uh, we are in the midst of uh, uh, publishing another book on the um, quality assurance, uh, best practices in MOOCs. We have also a, uh, what we call the APEL, that is the Prior Experiential Learning Credit Award that anyone can take uh, a MOOC courses uh, and then they can use that certification to, uh, for a degree application in the public universities. And this is the uh, credit transfer MOOC that we award. Uh, these are the criteria. We, the MOOC, you have to have a quality MOOC, uh, sufficient curriculum content, and also uh, there would be a verification. This verification or credit uh, verification test, validation test, is for the students. To, before they are certified, they will have to take a uh, competency test for the MOOC that, to be credited. Right. And we do, of course, do a lot of trainings and support for our uh, uh, lecturers or educators when they develop their MOOCs. Right. So uh, this is like a uh, timeline for the uh, development of a MOOC. Uh, at this moment, we are looking at the R&D of the innovation and teaching and learning as part of the renovation, and also lifelong learning in culturation, right? Okay, these are some of the examples of MOOC. In, uh, this is under the, University of, the, the national universities. We also have MOOC in Sea Turtle MOOC. Okay? This is by the University of uh, Malaysia Tengganu. 
sea turtle biology and conservation. So they actually do the uh, shooting in the, uh, in the sea. Uh, this is UMP MOOC, the University of Malaysia Pahang. We have our presenter here also today. And this is from my university, we call it the Putra MOOC. Our niche is actually on agriculture. So we have a, a MOOC on agriculture and men. Okay, so this is actually my MOOC. The Amazing World of Microbes. Right, this is actually the uh, uh, 3D models. The reason why I'm showing this, uh, this example is actually we, I want to uh, share with you, like we have 15 of us in the department and we get all the uh, students from year one to year four to create the MOOC within three months. Uh, we actually gamify, gamify the MOOC And we call it the micro scavenger hunts. So these are all the games that we have in the MOOC itself. So when, uh, just now Prof, when you mentioned about how we, uh, uh, the IP and we were concerned very about the uh, copyrights and all. So when the students and the, uh, when we actually develop the MOOC, we, um, we will make sure that we use um, all the copyrighted materials, like all the videos and the pictures that you saw just now are all our own pictures that we took, even from uh, the bacterial and the fungi using microscope. Um, this one is a different, a little bit different. This is a MOOC between three, um, three universities. The MOOC, this MOOC is actually for service learning courses. Service learning in microbiology, for example. Now, we call it the virtual microbe special education. This, the subject matter expert are my students from microbiology, right? And another universities, uh, the um, International University of uh, Islamic Universities, they are the students, TESOL student teaching, uh, uh, taking the instructional design course. And we have another students from the University of Science Malaysia in Penang who are taking, um, a, they are pre-service teacher that will be teaching special, ed, uh, a special education school. Students with disabilities. That means they, some, the, do you know what is um, the special, uh, special education school? Right, so um, we would create content, for example, as simple as wash your hands, okay? Wash your hands. And then, the, and then uh, for our micro, uh, microbe students will um, like prepare the content and we will um, educate and we will put content on how, you know, if you don't wash your, your hand, what are the microbes that will be on your hands. And the ID, the instructional design students will uh, prepare the instructional, the module together with the pre-service teacher. So we actually prepare MOOCs for teachers who will be teaching students with uh, disability, special disabilities. So that's why we call it uh, virtual microbe special education. We call it virtual microbes because we don't meet physically because they are on, um, in the north of Malaysia and we are nearly uh, in the south of Malaysia. So we meet virtually to discuss and to prepare our content. Okay? The reason why we is called service learning because once it is, uh, the contents are ready, we will bring our students who are actually from the uh, microbiology and uh, this group of students to go to the school to, to apply what they have uh, uh, developed. 
Okay, before that comes the virtual microbes. This is another way of learning where we, um, i show you later on why we, I call it virtual microbes. It's actually uh, from eight universities, including one from uh, Lafayette College and La Trobe in Australia. Okay, I think this one very famous quote by John Dewey, if we teach our students like we were taught yesterday, we rob them of tomorrow. Now, again, um, although my, my students, for example, when they are actually microbiology, but they, but, uh, they learn microbiology with technology. Now, when... If I ask you, how do you think that you make learning, learning um, meaningful? How do you want your student to best to learn? Uh, yesterday, Dr. E was said engagement and uh, Carol mentioned about fun and all, right? So the same question when I ask a group of students from different universities, different background, and I say, how do you learn best in your classroom? What do you think that they will say? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> are you looking at me or are you looking through me? <laughs> how do you think that your students think that, how do they learn best? By doing? Huh? By doing? So when I ask, I'm using mentimeter.com, okay? I'm not using it now, but when I ask, mentimeter.com, how do you learn best? I'm using this app. This is a word cloud. The largest word is actually the highest number, the, the frequency of word that is used. And you can see here, it's actually love. The students say they learn best. How do they learn best in class? Love. So I asked the student, what do you mean love? Love here, they said they have to love the topics. They have to love the environment. Right? They have to love the classroom, they have to love the people, and may they even have to love the lecturers. Love in the way that you know, they are interested to learn. So our job is to create that loving environment. Right? Einstein said, I don't teach my students, but I attempt to create an environment in which they can learn. So that's why that we, we are... We are love. We want to love. <laughs> and we are what we call just now learning designers. Remember? Yeah. All right. Okay. And of course, all this visual, practical and all. Right. This, is, this is actually my class. So remember the learning designer. Right? Learning designer. But learning designer can be upgraded now to COO, not chief operating officer. <laughs> Chief Opportunity Orchestrator <laughs> Meaning that you try to Create opportunities uh, orchestrate Opportunities for them to learn When you design your MOOCs You have to put You have to design on And, and you must think How you're going to get your students Or the, the people to When they join your MOOC That is how, how they learn best Okay uh, I think this morning, uh, Dr. Ayani also mentioned about Hutagogy, Pieragogy, and Cybergogy. And we are, when we actually in the virtual learning environment, these are the approach that we would want to also uh, look into about what we call the self-determined learners. When they take your mood, they learn from your mood, what, what, what's next? You know? And how do you actually attract them or motivate them to... to Further, uh, their interest, pedagogy. In the MOOC environment, you have to have this. Learn to develop a community of people learning together. So, although our, uh, as lecturer or uh, the learning designer, we facilitate, but to develop the culture of learning with the peers in the MOOC uh, uh, environment is very important. And of course, the... Uh, Wang and Kang in 2006 published this, coined the word cybergogy of engaged learners. In this uh, cybergogy, they actually um, interpret and describe how uh, in the virtual learning environment, uh, 
students uh, will be able to collaborate. Okay, now, remember just now, students want to connect. And, and you see people who actually, when they come to your university, they will, what do you think that the first thing they will ask? What do you think that they will ask when they come into the universities? Wi-Fi password. <laughs> or when, whenever you're here, you ask for Wi-Fi password. Why? They will not ask you whether you have Wi-Fi or not in your university. If your university, they don't have, you don't have Wi-Fi, they don't come to your university. <laughs> what do you want? What do you think they ask for Wi-Fi password? They want to share their status. This is where I am now, right? In TCU, for example. In Bangkok, right? They update their status in their Facebook. And they are actually sharing, connecting to the world through social media, which is actually the highest bloom taxonomy, bloom digital taxonomy, right? Okay, so these are some of the uh, verbs in Bloom's digital taxonomy that you can actually uh, um, do, um, especially uh, some keywords or, uh, and also some activities using Bloom digital taxonomy. Right, and I'm sure uh, uh, these are some another way. And a lot of people are talking about this higher order thinking skill and all. And and uh, in the Bloom taxonomy, when you actually create your content in um, in your MOOCs also, we would want to encourage all these uh, higher order thinking uh, skill uh, assessments. Okay, active learning. What kind of active learning? So, in, I think one of the uh, motivation to get students to uh, complete their tasks okay, in MOOC, in the virtual learning environment itself, is to give them um, experience. Uh, experience to get, to, to get them to get used to learning by doing, to get them to get used of learning by themselves. Okay? Take charge of their own learning. Okay, remember just now, self-determined learners. So, but us, we have to create that environment for them by introducing active learning. Maybe before these, uh, uh, some, some of the um, activities that you do in class will actually uh, give them the motivation to learn uh, virtually. For example, my class is BYOD, bring your own device. So we do a lot of for, uh, formative assessments. Uh, videos, for example, videos that you created in your MOOC, you can also use an app like, for example, this is the Web 2.0 tool called AdPuzzle, where you can actually add quizzes in between, in between the video. Sometimes, do, do you actually, you, when, especially when we give video to our students and, you know, when they come to the class and you ask them, did you watch my video yesterday? How many of them will answer? None, okay, maybe one. Some of them would ask, got video? <laughs> Is there video? They didn't even know that they were given videos. Yeah, they, were, they were given. And you're the one who actually like, you know, Dr. E's video. Do you know that how many of which watch? And then of course, if you, have, you don't have the learning analytics, you will not know, right? So I think we can actually have, you know, we get the technology to help us. But I think I want to emphasize very importantly that, you know, the pedagogy will come first, not the technology. Technology is a tool to help, right? So to enhance, uh, 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 you know, um, how we actually prepare our students, uh, this uh, Web 2.0 tool is a very good um, approach. Collaborative learning, mind map, you see? This is actually a mind map. So what do you see? You can't see anything? Nang <laughs> tip? Okay, do you see different colors? Uh, pink, blue, and black? That's actually different people. Different uh, members of the group contributing to the same mind map. So let's say we are now in Thailand and we have Japan and we ask them to do a mind map, especially in, in MOOC, we have different people. You actually contribute to a mind map, to one mind map. Okay, 
Uh, this is called poplet, for example, right? Or you can even, uh, one of the learning activities, one of the tasks, you can ask them to um, sub do a flip book. This is a project called Adopt a Microbe. <laughs> right? And of course, oh, this is, I think this is one of their favorites now. I, since 2014, students are using this kind of animation. Uh, this is called the Powtoon. Huh? This is Powtoon, okay? Okay. Images. Remember, just now Prof mentioned about how it's, you know, you have to make sure the copyright. So one of the tasks given was to take your own photos, right? They have to take their own photos so that they don't infringe the copyright. And describe the microbial environment, microbes, on the, on the photo. So the photo here is the mascara. And you see all these dots? This dot actually is a link. It's a link to another, to another, uh, it's a link to a website, to videos, to YouTube. So this app is called Thing Link. Thing Link, right? But you have to design it. What do you want your student to link to? Right? Okay. So uh, quizzes and all. And comics, of course, is one of the best way of students reimagines. You know, students would want to imagine comics. Okay, remember how we actually we want your students to be motivated in the virtual learning. So we design in the what we call uh, uh, experiential learning. Thank a microbe is another project. Why I said thank a microbe? If I ask, I ask you now. I was I was going to say if I ask, but now I ask you now. When I say about microbe, what is the first thing that cross your mind? Sorry. Germs, okay. What else? <laughs> Numpty say like that. Okay. What else? Something tiny. Yes, Karen. Oh, the micro will talk talk back to me. Okay, that's very interesting. I've never had that experience. <laughs> But of course, the, the microbes, the bacteria, talk to themselves. That is called quorum sensing. <laughs> but actually, Tang a microbe here is actually a, a project that I give my students because when I ask about microbes, they all talk about diseases and food poisoning and you were saying like that, you see? So Tang a microbe is a, pro a project where I get my students to, uh, divide into groups, each group with different application, medical, environment, agriculture, and find one microbe that is beneficial uh, that is ben that can benefit the applications and they have to create one poster a1 and also they have to create one video okay one minute video and that video is embedded in the poster through augmented reality and we are talking about microbiology students here and they are not from IT right so this one using video scribe a video. Okay. So you see when you scan, that's a video. The poster, when you scan the video that they create just now will be played on the device, right? So it's embedded in the image. The image from the poster triggers the video. That is called augmented reality. All right? And okay, the 216, we did, we did the 3D AR. Right? 3D. And you imagine how we can actually, uh, by doing this, what are the things that we can explore? Right? Community work, for example, like life without microbes, we get students to come in to experience themselves on how, you know, to learn about all degrading bacteria, for example, right? And after that, in 2015, we actually uh, create a, organized an event called the Awesome Microbe Carnival, where we have about 1,000 visitors. So the students, you see, when they come into the tunnel, they observe the microbe, and when they actually, you see the posters, and now we even 
3D printed the microbe. So now not only you can see something tiny using the microscope, you can hold a microbe. Right? Okay, so this is the whole carnival in 2015, which we're going to have it in here again in uh, two, uh, this year, November. Now, I want to show you the gamification evolution. 2011, 2012, 2013, at that time when we said oh, we want to do a uh, wheel of fortune. Flip wheel of fortune at that time. But you see, two, uh, 2000, uh, this is 2000, between 2011 2013. But 2014, 2014, the same thing. 2014, the same thing. Oh, sorry. 2014, the same thing, but online. This is called willdecide.com. Okay? They use willdecide.com. And that was, only, that was four years ago. And then this one, who wants to be a millionaire? Right? But then, it's not you who create. You get your students to create. Right? Empowering the learners. Remember? Right. And of course, we also have the RPG. Uh, RPG game. This one is actually a campaign for leptospirosis. Leptospirosis um, is a disease caused by bacteria, uh, by rats. Uh? Uh, yes. Bacteria in uh, rats' urine. Yes. Okay. So that means whosoever played this game, they would know what is leptospirosis. Right? So it's a gamification. And for, with the same campaign of the bacteria, we created this game, Canvas game, that fits 16 people to play uh, 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 all this with the augmented reality and QR code also. Right? And game, board game, we do a lot of board games with AR and... These are all, and these are all that first semester student, right? And these are all copyrighted. So you see, when the students, when they leave their program, they have some publications. Huh? Podcast. Podcast is very easy to do, I mean, for the students. But if you have, uh, maybe for your class it would be easy, but for MOOC, you do not want to listen for like 500 podcasts, right? Yeah. Videos is, is... Okay, this is another app that you can use it for your e-content material. This is called Go Animate. Huh? Go Animate. Because we want to give diverse... Uh, just like this morning when um, uh, Kajimoto-san mentioned about con uh, video development, right? Uh, this is animation. And of course, you would want to, you know, reflect. When you do all this, what kind of reflection that, you know, you... So this is me at the end of the class. <laughs> the SpongeBob. Okay, after all, these are all the uh, examples of the project-based and experiential learning that I give my student. And a lot of people, uh, these past two days, they mentioned about Moodle, okay? In our universities also, we use Moodle. And Moodle is a good, one of the good platforms which they have this plugin called BBB, the big blue buttons, that you can use for virtual learning, right? Real-time virtual learning, just like Zoom, right? And this is one of the uh, projects which my students from my uh, UPM uh, teaching microbiology, microbes to the fourth grade student in two elementary schools in Albuquerque, in New Mexico. So we meet, actually we, meet, uh, we met twice, uh, one semester. Teaching in their practice, there is the potential of having an international. 
educational connection of schools that does not solely focus on a picture in time, but creates invaluable content to connect students around the world. The amount of knowledge we can share and learn from each other is limitless. So this is globalized online learning. Although the time difference right, is the challenge, because uh, at that time was 11 p.m. nearly midnight and at 8 o'clock in, in um, Albuquerque. So I have to get to, to actually get the university's bus to come to the class and send them back at, at midnight. But still, it, I mean, we, we managed to uh, do it. So this one, when I mentioned just now, virtual microbes, right? 2016, we have only about five universities, but 2017, we have eight universities with 769 students. The idea is each, uh, each um, course that is offered in that university, the lecturers will meet virtually and discuss on the assignment. So these are from different universities. And, and the group members in one, in one group members will have different uh, members from different universities. So they work together, we give them a timeline to, and we have a, a live streaming. So you can see this one from different universities. And they met at first, we used Trello, and then uh, we used Open Learning for the platform. And you can see here, the idea is, since my students are learning microbiology with technology, and I cannot teach everybody, so we get our students to teach them to learn microbiology at the same time with technology. So you can see here, for example, this is from La Troupe, Australia. So this is the, the mind map just now. So we, they met virtually uh, using Zoom, and that can be recorded. The recorded video uh, meeting uploaded in YouTube, in our uh, virtual micro channel. Uh, this is from uh, Lafayette College. And this I one, we use Padlet. What, what country are you all in? Malaysia. You're all in Malaysia? Yeah. yeah. So this is, we use Padlet so to actually introduce ourselves and uh, as a platform. Right? So these are some of the, uh, these are some of the products. Some of the products of the virtual micro assignment. So we have infographics. Uh, my map just now, uh, this is uh, montage videos and thingling, for example. So these contents, uh, these are products of the assignment given through a virtual micro just now. Right? And of course, we do a lot of reflection. So we have individual reflection, over 700 over reflections. And their reflection is like in any form. They can either have it in, uh, in video form like this, Right? From or, uh, okay, you see this one? Yes. She is a law student, but she's taking microbiology course. So they learn together. Right? So these are some of the reflections. You see, they can in many forms, in animation. Okay? Uh, this one is very interesting. Uh, sorry. My reflection to the project. My reflection to the project. I would like to give my own reflection towards the project. This project has helped me to overcome my fear of technologies. To be honest, I was a little skeptical about how this project is going to be considering the development of technology in our country is quite slow. I was unsure with the project at first, but I quickly became used to use the apps like Zoom, Poplet, and Flipbook. I even used Flipbook for my presentation in other subjects. So the student will be, uh, will be able to apply what the they learn to other courses. Manually. From joining this project, I have learned that my learning style is visual. He learned he about his that. learning style. I have gained confidence talking in front Gain of confidence. That was outside my circle. 
which means I have gained confidence talking to strangers and stepped out of my comfort zone. I also gained new great friends from different universities. This project gave me an opportunity to interact with other people visually. The only problem is during video conference, we struggled a lot to get a good coverage. It is very time consuming. I got to understand better about salmonella typhi and raise awareness about the bacteria to my family and friends. Learn about microbes. I recommend this learning method to all the Malaysia students. Okay, this is about talking about Malaysia student. But now we know, I, I mean, using this model, we can learn globally. Huh? It's not only for Malaysia students. Uh, this is actually how we learn through WhatsApp. Okay, the reason why I show this, for example, um, I have this group of WhatsApp. Okay, Th these are the WhatsApp group from the, f the year one until year four students. So we have about 200 over students in the WhatsApp group. Now, let's say if one student, for example, like this one, 1718 is the, the students from the uh, last, uh, uh, last year, who came in last year, uh, September, and he posts about HIV, right? He posts about HIV. And students from the seniors, they were actually discussing about HIV. And the students from the first year, second year, they are, they, they are learning together. And some of them even shared links, okay? Some even, even shared link. And you see there's no cure and vaccine for HIV and what are the challenges and all. This one also about the virus and why are they are not, you know, uh, HIV in gym, uh, chimpanzee and all. And then somebody, somebody will say, we should talk about Avengers. <laughs> when they were talking about HIV and they talk about Avengers. <laughs> Those are naughty people. Okay. So still, this is about uh, in the WhatsApp. So come back to this. What I'm trying to, to, to share is... I think it's very important. I'm a, I am a microbiologist. And, and it's my job as a microbiologist to get you... I, I'm supposed to be contagious. <laughs> and you all supposed to be infected. <laughs> right? So we have to show our passion, our enthusiasm of, of learning so that all of our students will get infected. Right? Yeah. We have to be infectious. And... Another, maybe you have, uh, you have heard about this uh, uh, cosmogogy. Okay? Cosmogogy was coined by uh, Julie Lindsay 2016. When I look at our uh, virtual learning uh, courses, especially our MOOCs, I think it is actually more to cosmogogy because it's the method of and practice of learning while connected to the world using digital technologies whereby the context of learning is with rather than about. So when we actually create our assessment, assessment for learning, assessment as learning, right? And it's not the location based and consider whom you learn with and what you construct together is most important, right? Okay, so in cosmology, it's about how to support individualized and personalized learning. Less teacher, school director, more self-determined, that is Yuta Goji, and also to collaborate in a culture of calibration in the uh, virtual environment and focus on the learner autonomy. Okay, what's next? Or ongoing? Uh, we would want to gamify, for example, gamify our MOOCs. Like for example, just now my MOOC with the micro scavenger hands, uh, they give you, once you finish one topic, they give you a clue to solve eh, for the scavenger hunt. Um, you want to create meaningful engagement, interactive, challenge-based learning, experiential learning, and we would want to inter to have inter or trans or multidisciplinary MOOCs, right? This one by Sean mentioned, so often you find that the students you're trying to inspire are the ones that end up inspiring you. And lastly, the only way to, to do great work is to love our work, to love what you do.
Thank you very much. See you. Thank you very much, Professor Suhani for such a, um, insightful information about Malaysia MOOC and also, you know, like many tips and techniques about how to redesign uh, the learning for the 21st century learners. So very, very impressive talk, Thank you. I would say. So, and I'm sure everyone um, thinks so too. So please, and everyone, give a big approach again for Professor Suhani. Thank you very much. Um, uh, we have okay. some time for okay. like maybe one question. Sure. Uh, any question from the floor? Any question? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for in very interesting presented. Uh, sorry, presentation. Uh, just wondering about the. Uh, the process of uh, creating uh, the materials like you suggest, because it seems like you need to use something like very, uh, some advanced IT skills. Oh, okay. Just wondering about uh, how are you participating with the IT department, okay. or uh, do you work with them, or the students have their uh, skills already? Yes, yes. All right. okay. Thank, you. Thank you for the uh, uh, good question. When my students came into the class, the first, the first time they come into my class, and then um, usually in the class we would want to go through the syllabus, right? What are we going to learn for this semester and all? But, but I didn't show that. Don't tell my head of the department. <laughs> I didn't show that. But I showed all the like, videos and all the, all the content that was done by uh, their seniors, right? But I told them, this is what you're going to do, and you get, you, you're going to do better, right? But then, when they look at that, they were thinking, are we in IT class or my code class, <laughs> right? You know, they were thinking. Now, again, when we were discussing, I was discussing also with Prof. Zeraini, um, when, when we say about digital natives, that doesn't mean that they are tech-savvy. Right? They know how to use uh, social media, but they, don't know how, they do not know how to use mobile devices for learning, for example. Some of them, they don't even know how to convert Microsoft Word to PDF. They don't know about how to use Google uh, Form of, or Google Slides, for example. But they are fast learners, yeah. right? And like I do, uh, uh, my students, by the end of the, by the, end of the semester, they would know how to use all the tools. I did not spend a minute to show them how to use the tool. I just give them the name. I didn't even give them the link. For example, okay, um, we're going to use canva.com for infographic, for example. Right? And then I just told them that we're going to use Canva. And then I would expect, but I told them, I would expect them to learn with each other, to collaborate with each other. So when they, when they submit their um, infographics, and then I see some differences on what I know about Canva, then I would ask, oh, what did you use for your infographic? Oh, they say, oh, we use pick to chart We use Vengage. Some of the names that I did not know myself. Mm -hmm. So what do you think they were doing? They're searching. Question is, why? Curious. But why are they curious? They want to know because they are interested. So the first thing that we have to do is to instill the interest. And when they, are, uh, um, when they explore and they give new things to us, we as the 21st century educator, we have to become... To have, uh, we have to become what we call co-learners. We want to, we learn from them, we learn with them, right? Co-creators and co-learners. And do not underestimate your student. Okay? okay. Thank you very much, Thank Professor. You. And I think, like, you know, if you have more questions, okay. uh, Thank you very much again. will come to us during the break. So. <laughs>